Well, hello, Shoreline Church. It is Friday, April 3rd. Uh, we continue this journey together, and we're going to keep doing these, uh, these uh, daily devotions, uh, and, and maybe even after this is all done with, we might do these occasionally anyways, because people have really seem to enjoy them. But I want to read to you from Psalm 42. Listen to these words. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have become my food day and night. While people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. I love this psalm. It talks about how, how the psalmist's heart yearns and thirsts like a deer thirsting for streams of water. I hope during this season your thirst for God is growing and that your satisfaction is coming by meeting with God. Even as we meet weekly in a different way in our homes, I pray that you can encounter God's presence. But there's something interesting in this psalm. Uh, the, the, the psalmist says, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one. The psalmist is remembering what it felt like to, to come with this group of people who were excited and passionate together to worship Jesus. And I think we're all missing that. I look forward to when we can gather together and really celebrate the goodness of Jesus together among his people. And yet until then, We'll keep gathering and worshiping him like this. I want to pray with you that your soul would long for God and you'd find your satisfaction in him. God, this is our prayer today, that our longing for you would grow. And in our longing and our seeking and our searching, we will find you. And find that, that as we come to you like a deer who drinks cool water from a stream, Lord, that we find satisfaction and peace for our souls during this season. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, now, uh, Dr. Rick Alexander, the vice president of our church board, is going to give you an update on what's happening in the Monterey area and just give you some words of encouragement. And I look forward to seeing you on Sunday online as we worship together from our homes. God bless you. Have a great day. Enjoy listening to Dr. Rick Alexander. Hey, Shoreliners. In this week's video, I thought I would answer some of the most common questions that I've been asked about the COVID-19 virus. One of the first questions is, how long are we actually going to be sheltering in place? Um, it certainly seems that two weeks was insufficient, and probably sheltering in place will be extended certainly through the end of this month, perhaps uh, into next month as well. Um, most of these recommendations are based on modeling uh, of what the virus has done in um, China. Uh, it seems that after we start to see cases in any local community, the uh, number of new cases will peak in two to three weeks. Following the peak, there will be a time period of another three to four weeks where we see decreasing cases. Given that scenario, we're certainly going to be sheltering in place till the end of this month and possibly to the end of May. Um, that would be my best estimate, and I think that's what the experts are saying at this time. The second question I get asked is, are we going to be looking like New York City or New Orleans? The answer to that, I believe, is no. Um, the governor has uh, been stating that the sheltering in place is being very effective here in California. We're not seeing the exponential rise in cases that they've seen in, in other locations, particularly urban locations, and we're fairly optimistic that we will see a flattening of the curve here in California. All of that, of course, is based on several assumptions, the most important of which is that we follow the recommendations and guidelines of our health departments. Again, sheltering in place, keeping social distancing, and using good hand uh, washing and, and sanitizing. Talking about that, the other question I get asked is, what about masks? Well, we've gone back and forth about whether masks will help prevent or not. 
What I would like to tell you is based on our evidence in China, masks are very helpful. Now, do they prevent COVID all the time? No, of course not. But they're very helpful at decreasing spread, particularly asymptomatic spread. My recommendation would be that if you can, please wear a mask when you're out at the grocery store or out in public. The other thing that a mask will do is it will help you remember not to touch your face. And this is a very, very common way that the virus is spread. The second thing I'd like to point out is that 25%, and this is an estimate, of, of, of new infections are caused by asymptomatic viral spreaders. Another question that I've been asked recently is whether hydroxychloroquine and Zithromax in combination is effective in treating the COVID-19 virus. There are some preliminary studies out of France that suggest that this may be helpful, particularly in patients in the ICU. I want to point out that these studies are very pre preliminary, however, and involve only a small number of patients. There are currently ongoing studies in the United States to see if, in fact, this combination of medication can be helpful. I think it's important to point out that these medications are not without risk, and particularly hydroxychloroquine, which is a drug that's commonly used to treat malaria, is known to increase the QT interval in a heart rate, in the heart rate, and is known to cause sudden death in those patients. It certainly should not be used outside a hospital setting, and certainly not in any way has it been suggested that it can prevent the disease. Another common question I get asked is where are we in regards to COVID-19 testing? Optimally, uh, in any epidemic or pandemic, what you want is you want the ability to rapidly screen a large uh, population of patients and then be able to identify and isolate not only carriers, but patients that have active disease. Unfortunately, for reasons that are beyond uh, my understanding, we are not able to do that at this time. Uh, all testing is being done through the Monterey County Health Department. They're limited to 80 tests a day. The turnaround time is between 24 and 48 hours. Anybody desiring testing needs to be tested through one of the local hospitals and based on symptoms, a determination will be made whether the tests will be done or not. Um, is this uh, frustrating? Absolutely. I wish I had more answers and hopefully we will see improvements in the near future. Another question I've been asked is whether bringing home packages from the grocery store or uh, from restaurant takeout is it necessary to sanitize the packaging when you bring it home? Uh, and what is the risk of infection from that? The risk appears to be very, very low. Uh, you don't necessarily need to decontaminate or sanitize the packaging. Just throw it away and make sure you wash your hands. I want to conclude today's video by giving you an update of the number of COVID patients in uh, Monterey County. As of noon yesterday, we have 38 confirmed COVID patients at Community Hospital. Six are hospitalized, two are currently in the ICU and are stable. Salinas Valley has had hospitalized COVID patients recently. I don't know how many are still remaining in the hospital. Natividad Medical Center currently has no hospitalized COVID patients. I want to emphasize that clearly we're in the early stages of this pandemic in Monterey County. The next two to three weeks are going to be absolutely critical as to the number of new cases and uh, how uh, it affects our community. For these reasons, I want to strongly recommend that you continue to practice social distancing, sheltering at home, and good hand hygiene. In addition, this week I would add that everybody that has avail the availability should be wearing masks when out in public. I hope this information has been helpful and uh, I uh, look forward to updating you again next week. If people have questions, uh, please contact, for me, uh, please contact uh, Shoreline and they can forward them on to me. 
And, and in the meantime, uh, please continue to um, enjoy the online services and online ministries that continue to still be extremely active and important at Shoreline Community Church. God bless you.